obese woman child HOA president, had a fatal heart attack while feuding with me. I live bordering a former HOA. It shut down about a year ago. My property is the closest one to them, but far enough away that it does not fall in their jurisdiction since I am not on their street. My property is next to their street, and my driveway enters from the main road. The HOA's road is more than a half mile of houses, some really old, but the street was redeveloped in the 90s or so, and after that, an HOA was started. You go from a country road and then take a right turn, and bam, you're in semi-suburbia. There are large farms on each side of the former HOA road. The oldest houses were among those owned by the HOA board. And there is also an old small elementary school that was converted into a home by one of the board members. And that was also where the HOA had all their meetings. When I moved into the area a couple of years ago, it was because I'd come into some money from inheritance and decided to buy a semi-suburban small town property that had been vacant for several years after the previous house that was on it burned down. The land itself was cheap and heavily overgrown with brush. Once cleared out, I had a manufactured home put there. There was even an existing chain link fence with a gate that kept the property lines well divided. I had enough inheritance money to pay for about 50% of all this without affecting my prior savings. And the rest I had to take on a mortgage for. It's just the sort of property I wanted. A little place of my own where I can work remotely. And if I ever have to move, I can probably sell the place for roughly three times what I paid for it. But I hope to stay here as long as I can. I'm the type who likes to stay firmly planted somewhere. And I hate traveling. I'd only been living in my current abode for a few days when I suddenly began getting trouble from the nearby HOA. The Rotund HOA president showed up along with a couple of her board members on a trio of mobility scooters like they were some kind of biker gang. They had notepads in hand and creepy smiles that I can only describe as looking like they already won from the moment they'd arrived. I made the mistake of leaving my gate unlocked and they just let themselves in. But they quickly learned I was not gonna let them force me into joining their little club. Before I could even tell them to get out, they'd already spread out. The president was giving me a pitch that the HOA was mandatory and the other two people started telling me about all the bylaws I was supposedly in violation of, one of them being the state of my grass, which was at the time almost non-existent because the ground had been leveled and reseeded when my house was set up. I had none of their attitudes and told them to leave. They refused and said they had a right to be there and actually stated that my information from real estate that my property wasn't in their jurisdiction was wrong. I told them that was a stupid lie and to get off my property, they refused to leave so I had enough and went into my house, then came back out my old 22 rifle I've had since I was a kid, and threatened them with it. It's just a 22, but it's not a small rifle, so it looks intimidating enough. They lost their minds in panic at the sight of the rifle, and actually called the police on me, instead of clearing out when I told them to. But the police sided with me after they arrived, because the HOA board were all trespassing, and I was was fully within my rights to defend my own property. The stunned looks on their faces were gold when the police took my side and told them to leave me alone since I was not in their HOA. The president whined about it repeatedly, but it did nothing because the cops also agreed I was not in the HOA's area of control and they were overreaching their authority. Then they were all then forced to leave. Somehow they thought I'd be a pushover just because I look young. I was 36 at the time and people still often mistake me for being mid-twenties. I had a baby face growing up, and even tried growing a mustache for a while to look more mature. Didn't work out very well. The HOA didn't quit trying to make me join. At first I was just getting membership applications in the mail, but then they started getting more passive-aggressive. One of the board members even waited for me at my gate about a couple of weeks after the first incident just to tell me that my refusing to conform was ruining neighborhood moral. I reminded him I'm not in his neighborhood, and he told me he could have me shunned if I didn't join. I actually laughed at him for that. I bought a country property to be left alone. Go ahead and shun me. I've got my own friends in the nearby city if I want to see them. Then told the guy to stay away from my property, and if he ever trespassed again, I'd have him arrested. Right after that, I started getting warnings in the mail for supposed infractions I'd committed. They actually sent me repeated warnings over the reseeded grass, did they not understand how newly planted grass grows? It takes a while to fill in, then it stopped being warnings, and they sent me a long list of fines they expected me to pay. 
The fines were for me for having a gate, the gate being yellow, preventing mandatory inspection of my land and house, owning a firearm, having a car in the wrong color, my fence being old and rusty, it was already there when I bought the land, my fence being too tall, six feet, my driveway not being paved, it's gravel, and they didn't consider my recently installed at the time metal shed and approved building. But that wasn't all. There were more fines going back years to the previous property owners and the period my property sat vacant and overgrown. They actually expected me to pay in total they $30,000. I was especially livid after they had sent me that list of bogus fines because they'd have had to have trespassed on my property just to know some of the things they were fining me for. Honestly, I think they were just making up rules at some point to claim I'd broken them. I walked the neighborhood and there were plenty of other rusty fences, patchy lawns, gravel driveways, cars the same color as mine, etc. I had to calm myself down with a drink, and then wrote a letter back, stating I was not in the HOA, never will be, and would not pay anything to them. Especially not for anything from before I ever even owned the property. I also made it clear their attempts to find me were blatantly illegal, if not outright fraud, and would not hold up in court. After that, my garbage can was vandalized after I put it out before going to work. It looked like it had been cut up with an electric saw or something. I called the cops. But there was little they could do with no witnesses. I had enough and paid a security company to come set up cameras. The HOA board took notice of the work vehicle from the security company, as I saw the same two board members who previously harassed me sitting on scooters and watching from the end of my driveway. They clearly took my threat of retaliation seriously because I got no more fake fines and my trash can was never touched again. But they still kept sending me membership applications weekly and even letters practically begging I just joined to keep the peace. So I started mailing them back with no, written in black sharpie on the envelopes and even a letter threatening to wipe my ass with their applications before sending them back. And even that didn't make it stop. For a while, I could not for the life of me figure out why they were so desperate to make me join. Turned out, their elderly woman child of an HOA president had practically become obsessed with some crazy plan she was calling HOA Zone Expansion, and was making it a hill to die on, since the HOA could not legally expand beyond its street without permission from surrounding property owners. And I highly doubt any of them would agree to join. I was just target hash one because I was the closest, and they wanted to make an example of me. I just kept rebuffing the HOA's repeated attempts to contact me, until one morning about three months after I'd moved in, I found my driveway blocked by a large transit van outside my gate. It was the HOA president, and she was blocking me in so she could personally make demands of me. I don't know why she bothered to use her van to block me in. She was already big as a whale, and could have just stood there herself. I even started calling her president whale behind her back because she was morbidly obese to the my 600 pound life level, and often wore blue and white. She had on what I can best describe as a business jacket over a moo moo dress, hair in a tight bun, big grandma glasses, and a beaded necklace with a big wooden cross hanging from her neck. And I'm not exaggerating when I say she usually had some kind of food in her hands. Like, almost every time I saw her. Even during this interaction, she stopped to eat. From what I learned of her later, she was a widow. And her husband was an obese person like her that ate himself into his grave during his 50s. As for President Whale... I do believe she had something very mentally wrong with her, but I wasn't sympathetic after what she tried to do to me. Back to her van blocking me in. I told President Whale to move her damn vehicle, or I'd be calling the effing police on her. She scolded me like an old church lady for my choice of language, and said she didn't have to move because the HOA owns the road. And since I refused to join the HOA, or pay the fines, she was landlocking me in. Even I knew this was very illegal, and asked if she was mental because I'm not even on the HOA's road. I'm on the main road the HOA road branches from. She refused to listen to me, so I started getting ready to call police. She tried to stop me from calling and claimed she just wanted to negotiate. I told her there was nothing to negotiate. She was blocking me in illegally, and I would be calling cops if she didn't move her van ASAP. But she pretended not to even hear me and said that if I just filled out the forms to join the HOA, all of my problems would go away. Then she went on a, the HOA is so great, sales pitch, and refused to stop till I told her she was trying to act like a mafia boss, and the HOA was the source of all my problems she was claiming would go away. 
Then I said that all the junk food she was eating was rotting her brain. She called me a petulant child. I reminded her I was a grown ass man and she was a hypocrite to call me petulant when she was the one illegally blocking me in to try and blackmail me into joining her HOA. She had the nerve to say what she was doing was morally right and for the good of the community. I said back that it wasn't, it was just to satisfy her own ego and blackmail is illegal. I also pointed out she wasn't being a good Christian by wearing a cross and claiming such lies. She rolled up the HOA forms and aimed to swat me with them. I had enough and finally called the police. Whale started screaming at me to hang up the call while attempting to chase me around and hit me. But the slow pile of blubber couldn't even get near me. After only a couple of attempts, she stopped and started wheezing. And then she started yelling to try and get the police on the phone to think I was attacking her. I called her out for this and reminded her I have cameras. She immediately stopped and then waddled back to her van a tired sweaty mess. We stared each other down for around 20 minutes while she sat in the side of her van and stuffed her face before the cops showed up. They were initially unsure what was going on because of Whale's prior screaming when I called. But I had video from my dash cam and my house to show I'd never laid a finger on her. President Whale tried to make a big show of fake panic and said I was dangerous. But the police told her to move her van as she was illegally blocking my driveway. She refused and said the road was the HOA's. But the cops said it wasn't the first time they'd been called because of her harassment in the area and also stated that the road she was currently on was not the HOA's road. And the road the HOA itself is on is county owned, not private, which was news to me. But it meant she couldn't do this, even if I was on the HOA's road. Then she was bluntly told she cannot block access to anyone and to move the van right away or be cited. She tried to argue further, so they ticketed her on the spot and threatened to arrest her and have the van towed if she didn't comply. She gave us all death glares and finally moved the van. I arrived to work about an hour late that day, but with an interesting story to tell. Not too long later, I was served a small claims lawsuit from Whale. She was suing me for the cost of the fine she had to pay for the citation police gave her and for emotional distress I caused that was affecting her health. I pretty much looked at the letter and laughed because I was ready to pick that land whale apart in court. But then the HOA tried another dirty move around the same time. I was soon notified by my bank that someone was attempting to put a lien on my property for 30k. The same amount as what the HOA tried to previously fine me. I finally got a lawyer and the lien was soon cancelled because it was groundless. I filed counter lawsuits against Whale and the HOA for harassment. I also personally went to see the HOA board at their next meeting to tell them off for what they'd tried to do and that I'd see them in court. Whale actually had one of those little wooden gavel mallets and was repeatedly striking it on the table that she was sitting at. She pounded it on the table while yelling, NO! every time I tried to speak. The rest of the HOA board had to tell her to stop and even took the gavel from her hand like she was a child that needed a timeout. She went on a tangent about how she was in charge, but the rest of the board told her to she needed to pack up and go home for the day, but she refused and just sat there with her arms crossed and pouting. I talked with the rest of the board and they tried to deny any involvement in the past things Whale had done to me, including the attempted lien, which was only her doing apparently. I called those as outright lies and pointed out how several of the board members had previously harassed me in person along with Whale at my house and they were also likely the ones who snuck onto my property to write more fines until I put cameras up. Because I certainly wouldn't figure Whale was the one climbing over my gate and trudging around like that with how fat she is. I then said I was suing them for the harassment, fake fines, and attempted lien on my property and my destroyed trash can if I could prove it. I'd see them in court to take them for everything I could, because they were royally effed. Their faces all seemed to get flushed save for Whale. She was puffy and red like a ripe tomato. I was then politely asked to leave so they could deliberate. Not long after that, things came to an abrupt halt. Only a few days after I'd went to see the HOA board, President Whale was found dead in her home from a fatal heart attack. Apparently it had been brought on by stress and binge eating because the board had refused to stand by her and voted to dismiss her as HOA president after I told them I was suing. I heard she had a full-on child tantrum. I only wish I'd still been there to see it. 
Apparently, she begged them to reconsider, and they packed her things for her and made her leave sobbing. She went home and then died on her couch while binge eating cake. She lived alone, so nobody found her for days. And the morgue had a hell of a time getting her remains out of the house. She was in her mid-sixties and morbidly obese with a serious junk food addiction, so she was basically one Twinkie away from kicking the bucket at any time. My lawsuit against the HOA ended when they agreed to settle out of court after Whale's death. They basically blamed everything on her. They claimed the fines and false lien were only her doing, though I still don't really believe that. But the board wormed out of any serious consequences since it was Whale's name on all the paperwork. In the settlement, the HOA paid all my legal fees, repaid the cost of my having to get CCTV cameras installed, and gave me a few thousand dollars on top of all that as a show of good faith. But Whale's family decided they were gonna come after both me and the HOA. They tried to sue both me and them for causing Whale's death, but the judge threw both cases out before they even went to court. I ended up getting a few anonymous threatening letters taped to my gate talking about things like breaking my legs. And the houses of each HOA board member got vandalized too. My mailbox was also ripped up out of the ground in the middle of the night. Joke was on them. I get all of my mail through a P.O. box. Sadly, I didn't have a camera at the end of the driveway to see who did it. I'd previously tried putting a trail cam there, but passing cars set it off all day and night. So I removed it. The mailbox was only really there as an address marker anyway, and wasn't hard for me to replace. But tampering with a mailbox, even one that's basically just for display, is a federal offense. It couldn't be proven it was Whale's family that did it, as there were no cameras or witnesses that saw anything, and my mailbox was never found. But Whale's family vandalizing of the HOA board members' houses were all provable, as there were cameras there, and those idiots didn't bother to cover their faces when they did all that damage. Some arrests were made, and a lot of restraining orders were filed. Whale's family finally sold her house and left. Guess they weren't stupid enough to go against a restraining order. I just replaced my display mailbox with one from Home Depot, and that's pretty much where the entire mess ends for me. The whole situation was too much for the HOA, though, and the residents passed a motion to shut it down completely. The HOA served no real function for comfort, as there were no paid for common areas like a park or a pool. All meetings were held at the house of one of the board members, which as I said used to be a small school. There were accusations of repeated election rigging, as the board had remained the same for a long time, despite the fact they were so hated. And there were threats of an audit too. The board didn't fight the shutdown because they were all on the verge of being removed by force so they were ready to throw in the towel. A couple of them even moved away, one of which I heard said that I had ruined everything and the neighborhood was going to hell without the HOA. The former board were all retired busybodies anyway. The only one that's any semblance of liked is the one whose house used to be a school and the HOA meeting building. They opened the gym room so locals could come in and play basketball on the regular. Their kids love it especially. I've been living peacefully here ever since and I have actually made some friends. I didn't intend to, but I stopped to talk with neighbors a few times while out riding my bike, and it just went on from there. I've even been invited to a few barbecues and even a birthday party. Life is good.